introduction and that worship time with Rach and Kim, so good. And it is always so fun to be here live in the studio, live with you and Beyond Church Online. So welcome, if you're um, with us tonight for the first time, an extra special warm welcome to you. We want you to feel like you're right at home, like uh, we're right there with you wherever you are, in the living room, the kitchen, the lounge room, wherever you might find yourself tonight. So I'm really praying and believing that tonight is a night that really moves you in a, in a way that maybe you've not been moved before when it comes to thinking about leaving a financial legacy for your family and for those people who are coming up uh, behind you, those people who you're uh, believing to invest into. At, at our church, we're right in the middle of a series called Finding Financial Favour. And I'm going to jump right into this message tonight uh, because this message also, this series leads into our opportunity to contribute to our vision offering for 2020. And I'm going to unpack a little bit of what that's going to look like this year. So you've picked a great night to be with us tonight at Beyond Church Online. It's probably one of the best nights of the year for me. I love speaking about um, finance. You know, I know the church gets a bad rap from time to time about, you know, is the church always after your money or the church is always talking about money. But you know what? Money plays a significant part in everybody's life. And I believe that if we build our lives on a biblical foundation uh, when it comes to putting God first in our finances, we can actually flourish in that area of our life. And that's really my prayer for you tonight, that this message will help to build a financial foundation for your life that'll set you up to succeed in every area of life. So let's get straight into it. I want to go to uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 1 to 5. The verse will be on the screen for you tonight, courtesy of one of our new team members in the room. So thanks so much for that. And thanks to Jason Hamilton, who helped to preface this message tonight with his story about David Uh, fetching five stones to slay Goliath. Because we're picking up a story here in the Bible that is David, who was uh, one king of Israel, uh, described as a man after God's own heart. Uh, He was a warrior king, and he was about to hand over uh, his legacy to his son Solomon. And David's heart was to build a temple for God, a place where people could meet with God, a house of worship. And he wanted to build this, but God said, no, I've chosen someone else for this task. And that's where we pick up the story right now in 1 Chronicles 29, verse 1 to 5, which says this. Then David, the king, addressed the congregation. He said, My son Solomon was singled out and chosen by God to do this, which is to build the temple. But he's young and untested, and the work is huge. This is not just a place for people to meet each other, but a house for God to meet us. Wow, that's a powerful line right there. And David said that I've done my best to get everything together for building this house for my God, all the materials necessary. And it goes on and talks about all the things that David brought to help build the temple. And then it starts up again. It says, in addition to and beyond what I've gathered, I'm turning over my personal fortune of gold and silver for making this place of worship. And he finishes with this thought after he tells everyone that the that he has gathered everything, every resource he can from his kingdom and given off his personal wealth to build the temple, he ends with this question to the people who are gathered around at the time. The people of God. Here's the question he poses to them. He says, now, how about you? Who among you is ready and willing to join in the giving? So the people are invited to participate in what God is calling them to do, which is to create a place where he can meet with them. And so what is their response? What is the response of the people of God when they're invited to participate? Are you ready? Are you willing to join in the giving, to build what God's called us to build? This is their response in 1 Chronicles 29 verse 6. They say, ready and willing, the heads of families, leaders of the tribes of Israel, commanders and captains in the armies, stewards of the king's affairs, stepped forward and gave willingly. They gave willingly. So here's my question for us tonight, church, beyond church online. What does Beyond Church do when we are asked that same question? And now, how about you? Who among you is ready and willing to join in the giving? It's a powerful question. Who wants to participate in the call of God on their life and step up to and say yes to what God's calling you into? I wonder what your answer is to that question. Are you ready and are you willing? What does Beyond Church say when we're asked to contribute to our vision offering? Year after year. You know, we started our vision offerings in 2015. And in 2015, I can tell you what Beyond Church said when they were asked the question, are you ready and are you willing to join in the giving? They said, yes, we are ready and we are willing. Because in 2015, I've got a picture on the screen here for you. Have a look at that. You've got that on, on the screen there. That's a picture of Daisy. That's my dog in 2015 as a puppy, a black Labrador. Well, they told me that she was a black Labrador at the uh, pet shop. And they had it on the sign. And then when I got her home, she certainly looked like one for the first nine months. And then all of a sudden, something else emerged (laughs) from the backyard. And it wasn't 
a black Labrador. But it was Daisy and she's cute, so that's a win. And in 2015, yeah, we weren't raising money for the dog. I know what you're thinking. What are you talking about your dog for? Okay, we weren't raising money to buy a black Labrador in 2015. But in 2015, our church a vision offering was to increase our physical uh, footprint in our Cessnock location uh, to help to build a prominent presence in the CBD of the town here in Cessnock. And we wanted to connect in a deeper and a more present way with our community. And we had this opportunity to expand our front room uh, into our front room of our facility in Cessnock. And we needed to raise the funds for 12 months rent for that particular um, extension of our property. We needed to raise funds to furnish it, to paint it, uh, and to have it ready to receive guests and to be a, and to host our community and to reach our community in that way. And in that particular year, 2015, we raised the money we needed to step into that property. And as you can see on the screen, there's some images there of us, you know, making room, uh, stepping out in faith. And the money was received to move forward in that way. And in 2016, I've got some images here of what we were raising money for in that year, our vision offering. But the first picture you'll see there is Daisy again. She's, our, she's my little cutie, a little bit bigger. And as you can see, she's not quite as black Labrador as she was 12 months ago. 2016, our vision offering was to raise funds to host a community party in a park in Cessnock for our Cessnock location. Our Cessnock location had been running for 30 years in 2016. And we wanted to honour our community for, um, for us being a part of the community for that uh, length of time. And we wanted to honour all the previous uh, pastors and leaders of our church. And so we invited them back uh, to Cessnock. We hosted a massive party in the park. You can see there's us on stage singing some songs and some jumping castles and stuff around. And then you see another picture there of us having a, a, a gala dinner at Cypress Lakes Resort. And we really wanted to honour the leaders that had been before us because they had said yes when they were invited. Where, Are you ready? Are you willing? Those leaders stepped up and came forward and led our church well for uh, 30 years. And we just wanted to honour the legacy that they left us so we could stand on their shoulders and continue to move forward. And then in 2017... When asked the question, Beyond Church, are you ready and willing to join in the giving? In 2017, there she is again. That's my little friend, Daisy. We had our Home for Good campaign. Now, unfortunately, you won't see any other pictures in this year other than Daisy. Because in 2017, we had the opportunity to sign the contract to buy uh, the Cessnock location property, which is a significant piece of real estate. In fact, it's about 2,500 square metres of floor space, including um, a car park at the back of the property, which we're currently building a, um, a, a playground on right now and for a community playground. And we got the opportunity to purchase the building. We signed the contract for the purchase. We gathered the church and rallied the church around raising money for the deposit for this property. And on the Vision Weekend, so if we go back a couple of years, 2017, a few years, on the same Vision Weekend that we'll be working towards this year, the Thursday of that weekend, the owner uh, contacted the church and said, actually, I've changed my mind and I'm not selling the property. Um, so that was pretty devastating, which is why there aren't any other images that year. But as a church... We still said yes to the question, are we ready and willing to make a contribution to what God's doing here in our community? And we were able to raise a significant amount of money to go towards a deposit if buying a building was ever going to happen for us again. And then 2018, now how good is it, church? You are the church that says yes when asked the question, are you ready and are you willing? In 2018, there she is again, my cute little Daisy. I'm surprised I've got enough pictures of her to have one for every year. She doesn't necessarily rate very highly in the photos up on my phone, but hey, there was one for every year. Praise God. Our vision offering in 2018 was to focus on renovating our auditorium, our kitchen, our cafe. You know, if we knew that if we had to um, stay here and rent the building uh, in, in our Cessnock location, we wanted to make sure that it was the best it could be. And so as a church, we said, let's raise some money um, to build a new order, uh, to renovate our auditorium, um, renovate our kitchen, build a new cafe. And there's some images there of that. Uh, and also we, in, we invested into a, uh, leadership development that year. And then after we'd raised all the money for the vision offering and for our missions team overseas, so we raised $10,000 for our missionaries in Vietnam, we raised $20,000 for our vision offering, then the owner of the building decided that he would be happy to sell this building to us again. And so as a church, we took a bold step and said yes to that opportunity and we came to the church. We said, hey church, guess what? We have this amazing opportunity to step into what God's called us to as a church. Are you ready? Are you willing to join in the giving? And in addition to the $30,000 we raised in 2018, we also raised an additional $92,000 that went towards purchasing this building in, here in our Cessnock location. Are you ready and are you willing to join in the giving? Beyond Church, you always answer with a resounding yes. 
In 2019, there she is again, my little friend Daisy, my little black Labrador cross with something else that is so far from a Labrador, you have got no idea. Our vision offering goal was to raise um, $30,000 and um, some of that was to go towards church planting. Some was to go to renovating uh, our midweek hub in our brand new Scone location uh, for our Creative Academy and our staff offices in Scone, which we launched in 2019, paying rent for the premises in Scone for 12 months. We also used that money to uh, build new offices here in Cessnock. We released some sound equipment here in Cessnock and sent that to Scone to help with the church plant there. We also built a new parents' room in our Cessnock location with that money. Actually, I'm just reading this and thinking to myself, not only are we ready and willing to say yes when we're, um, when we're talking about vision and moving forward as a church. But we seem to be able to do a lot with the money that we've raised. I'm just looking back and thinking, that doesn't seem like a lot of money. And man, we seem to accomplish a lot. Did you know why that is? Because um, church, a church like this is not built you know, on the skills and talents of an individual or on one wealthy benefactor. A church like this is built on the sacrifice of many, many people. And that's you. Over the years, if you've been a part of Beyond Church, you are the ones who say yes and want to keep moving forward with what God's called us to uh, in Cessnock and in Scone and now in our Beyond Church online location. So let's move to this year, 2020. What's happening in our vision offering for 2020? Well, this year, we're merging our mission commitment and our vision offering into one super generous above and beyond offering, which will be used for overseas missions in Vietnam, church planting, another physical church location, and capital works to our three current locations, With our, where our goal this year is to raise $50,000 to meet those three objectives. So what I want to do, I want to break it down for you, Beyond Church Online. Here is our uh, goal and our objective for our $50,000 for 2020. We're going to give our investor $10,000 into our missionary families in Vietnam. And they're doing a great work over there. Um, they're, they're meeting the needs of the local community in Vietnam across a whole range of villages and areas. And there'll be some more information coming about that. And if, you, if you're not already connected to our weekly email, that's where you'll get a lot of detail about what we're doing with our missions offering. So if you want to connect with that, there's a link in the comment thread on Facebook and YouTube. You can click the link to connect with us. And that will help you be able to know what's happening with our missionary team, uh, missionary families in Vietnam. We're going to commit to $10,000 to support their work over there in 20, uh, for 12 months. $10,000 for uh, new carpet in our Cessnock location front room. And if you've ever been to our Cessnock location, that would make a lot of sense to you. $10,000 for Scone to be completely independent from our Cessnock equipment. Uh, Every week we send uh, somebody up to Scone and we also send some equipment up to Scone as well. And we want to make sure that Scone is set up to succeed and uh, stand on its own two feet and be completely independent. And so we're going to invest $10,000 into that location to make sure that it has everything it needs to do that. We're going to invest $10,000 into this location, Beyond Church Online, for new camera. Is that right? Some new video equipment, some new online audio equipment. And we're going we're gonna to just take this online experience to a whole new level because Beyond Church Online, you are by far our fastest growing location. You're also, at the moment, uh, equal... Well, we are reaching as many people as any other physical location in Cessnock on a Sunday morning or Tuesday night in Cessnock or Scone on a Sunday afternoon. Beyond Church Online is reaching uh, new people in new places. And we know that church planting is always going to reach uh, new people in new locations where established churches uh, just aren't going to be able to do that. And so we want to invest into what God's doing through this new online venture. And if that's really moving your heart tonight, if you know that this is where you would like to make a contribution, then when the opportunity comes up later, you know, why don't you prayerfully consider what you could contribute? Because you can start contributing to our vision offering even today. So we're going to invest $10,000 into our online audio and video equipment for Beyond Church Online. And finally, $10,000 Uh, to go into a seed fund for our next physical church location. Because as I said, we know and the research shows us that to reach new people in new places, church planting is the way to do that, the most effective way to reach people for Jesus. So that's what we're going to be spending our $50,000 vision offering on. Each year as a church, we do have this amazing opportunity that sets us up to reach and to raise generation after generation of kingdom leaders in this community, in the Beyond Church online space, in our Cessnock location, in our Scone location, and any other location to come. And it's an opportunity for us, when we steward it well, can actually change the game for so many people for eternity. And so we have an opportunity, even today, to be the generation that our children's children look back to and say, thank you, Jesus, for their sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus, that they pioneered. Thank you, Jesus, that they persevered and that they chased down their God dreams even in the middle of a global pandemic so that we can stand on their shoulders and we can, we can inherit 
their legacy. And just like David gave the reins of the kingdom to Solomon and set him up to succeed in all God had called him to. You know, David writes a few thoughts about legacy in the Psalms. I want to read a couple of them to you now as we begin to wrap up. The first one is Psalm 78, verse 3 to 4. And he says this, he says, Stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. Don't you want that to be your story, that you're telling your children about the mighty, wondrous power of God at work in and through your life? What about this one? Psalm 145, verse 4 to 6, it says this, Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. What awe-inspiring acts will our children, our children tell their children about us? (laughs) I want my children to be telling their children about the time that they, the Beyond Church purchased its first physical location and, and they were a part of that and they saw their parents contribute and help to move things forward in the name of Jesus. I want my children to tell their children at the time Beyond Church launched, launched its first church plant in regional New South Wales and I want my children to tell their children about the time that Beyond Church pioneered a brand new online location in the middle of a global pandemic, reaching more people than ever before and seeing many people say yes to Jesus and joining teams and outworking the call of God on their life. That's what I want my children to tell their children. And talking about Daisy, you know, on Wednesday this week, actually last week, isn't it? Wednesday last week makes more sense, doesn't it? Wednesday last week, I was sitting in my office and I received a phone call. And on, in that phone call, uh, the, the person on the other end said, hello, is this Luke Main? I wasn't sure. Should I answer yes? Because when you don't know who calls and they ask, is this Luke Main? You know, maybe you don't really want to say, yeah, that's me. For some reason, I'm just too honest. I was like, yeah, that's, yeah it's Luke Main. And they said, oh, we have, we have Daisy. And I was thinking, well, who has Daisy? Who is this person? They said, oh, this is the RSPCA. This is the pound. And we have, we have Daisy with us. Uh, she's escaped. <laughs> she's, we've caught her and we've put her in jail. Uh, she'd pick, been picked up by the ranger. She'd been impounded. And they said, you've got to come and pick her up. I said, do you do Uber, do you do Uber delivery? Can you bring it to can you bring it to the office? And apparently there's no Uber, Uber pound yet, but that could be a business opportunity for somebody. Anyway, getting sidetracked. So I was obviously a little bit frustrated, a little bit disappointed, a little bit put out. But, you know, sometimes God does interrupt us, doesn't he? Sometimes God does uh, interrupt the monotony of our ordinary day-to-day life, which is what I was living out on, that, on Wednesday last week. You know, even God sometimes has to interrupt our financial world from time to time, which he certainly has done for many people recently. It wakes us up. It wakes us up and, and reminds us what we really need to be attending to, what's really important. And what matters most to God, sometimes he needs to tap us on the shoulder and say, hey, there's something really important that I want you to be aware of. And do you know what matters most to him? What matters most to God is the growth and the reach and the impact of the local church in our world. It's God's one and only rescue plan for humanity. There is no plan B. And sometimes we just need to be reminded that that's what's actually important. And we have received an invitation today. It comes around every year. It's called our vision offering. And it calls us to attend to what's important, to attend to what's on the heart of God. And thankfully, when I I got that call from the RSPCA, when I got that call from uh, the the ranger, I had the financial capacity to do what I needed to do because I didn't realise, but when your dog gets impounded, they want money from you to go and pick it up. And, uh, you know, if it's not registered or whatever, you've got to pay more money and it's like, are you serious? Like this was, um, and it was not even a, it's not even a purebred Labrador and it's starting to cost me a lot of money. <laughs> so I, I had the capacity to go and pick Daisy up. But, you know, if I had have had advanced warning, if I had been told, hey, you know, this is going to happen from time in, in the future, you know, I would have made sure that I was prepared to do whatever I could so that I could tell my children the story of the day that I rescued our dog. Because, you know, they pretend like they don't really love Daisy, but they do. And I know that if, they, if Daisy wasn't around, they'd be devastated. Because I want to be the person that tells the story about, you know, how I was ready to do what I needed to do to attend to what was most important to my family. And uh, I want to ask us the question again, you know, can I encourage us tonight to be prayerfully considering if we're ready and willing to join in the giving? to attend to what is most important to the heart of God. Like King David, a man after God's own heart, was ready to attend to what was most important to God, was ready to leave a legacy for his son, to begin to build 
uh, what God had called him to build, a house of worship, a place where people could meet with God. And, you know, sometimes God has to interrupt us and help us to point us towards what is most important to him. And maybe the interruption for you tonight uh, isn't so much about the vision offering. It's not so much about being awoken to the needs of the world around you. Maybe God's tapping you on the shoulder tonight and he's waking you up to what's most important to him, which is in fact you. You know that as you've been listening to this message, you've been hearing how the local church is moving forward in the world to reach people, to, to allow Jesus to, uh, to save the lost people in our world. And maybe you're sitting there watching and thinking, well, this is my moment to respond to this interruption on my life, that maybe Jesus is knocking on my heart right now and inviting me into our relationship with him. If that's you tonight, if this is all a little new to you, but you know in this moment that God's tapping you on the shoulder, he's interrupting the monotony and the, the, the ordinary life that you might be living, then your moment is now to respond to this invitation. I want to give you an invitation right now to say yes to Jesus for the very first time, to invite him into your heart, to give your life to him and help him correct your life and put it on course and on mission with Jesus Christ. So if that's you tonight, if you've never said yes to Jesus for the first time, can I invite you right now in a family of great friends, beyond church online where you should feel right at home, I want to invite you to say yes to the invitation to put Jesus first in your life. And if that's you, I want to pray this prayer with you tonight. I want to include you in this prayer. So our team at the moment, they're going to put a link in the comments right on Facebook and YouTube. It's already there. And uh, you can click that link and you can let us know that you're going to say this prayer with us and we can help you move forward in all that God has for your life on mission with Jesus. It'll change the game for you forever. So come on, if you'd like to pray this prayer with me, type yes in the comment thread right now. Click that link and follow it through and let us know you're praying this prayer. And everyone in Beyond Church Online, why don't you pray this prayer after me? And maybe you can be praying it for a friend as well, believing that they come to know the saving grace of their Jesus as well. So come on, everyone, heads bowed, eyes closed. Let's pray this this prayer together. Jesus, this is my decision. Today, I say yes to you. You died on the cross to pay the price for my sin. I invite you to be my saviour. Come into my life, forgive my sin, and fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. If you said that prayer tonight for the first time, we want to know about it. Type yes in the comment thread wherever you're watching. Click the link. Let us know um, that who you are so we can help to connect with you. And finally, uh, can I ask you to prayerfully consider Uh, during this season of finding financial favour, what God might be putting on your heart when you're asked the question, are you ready and are you willing to join in the giving?